Good evening. This planning commission meeting is called to order. This meeting has been properly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting law. We're live on KCLV Channel 2, and this meeting will be rebroadcast Saturday at 10 a.m., the following Monday at midnight, Tuesday at 5 a.m., and Thursday at 6 p.m. Will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk please call the roll? Thank you. <coughs> Chair Robit. <coughs> Absent. Excused. Excused. Chair. Vice Chair. Truesdale. Here. Commissioner Goines. Present. Commissioner Evans. Present. Commissioner Quinn. Here. Commissioner Ellsworth. Excused. And Commissioner Flangus. Here. Thank you. We have a motion for the minutes um, of September 10th, 2009. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the um, minutes from the September 10th, 2009 Planning Commission meeting. Any comments, questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be abstaining because I wasn't present for that meeting. Okay. Please cast your vote. And those are approved, and please note that... Uh, Mr. Flangus did abstain. Housekeeping items. Uh, Mr. Chairman, items 19, 20, and 21. Uh, the applicant has requested that these items be made to the November 5th Planning Commission meeting to allow the applicant time to address site issues. In item 24, the applicant has requested that this item be tabled. Any other items uh, with regards to this the Planning Commission has? Okay. We have a motion on these items. Sure. Oh, we want to open up that public hearing to see if anybody out here has any comments uh, with regards to 1920, 21, or 24. Seeing none, close public hearing. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the abeyance and withdrawal items as read in by staff. Okay, motion. And that is approved. No consent items. Now we go one motion, one vote items. The following items are considered to be, are to, can be considered under one motion, one vote. They are considered routine, non-public, and public hearing items. All public hearing and non-public hearing items will be opened at one time. Any person representing an application or a member of the public or a member of the Planning Commission not in agreement with the conditions and all standard conditions for the application recommended by staff should request to have that item removed from this part of the agenda. Item 6 is going to be removed, has been asked to be removed. Item 7, WVR 35710, Applicant Owner, Montecito Partners, LLC, for a waiver of Title 19.12.040 to allow a 394 cubic foot utility box to be set back zero feet from the public right-of-way with no requirement of landscaping, where three feet of landscaping is required at 6505 Grand Montecito Parkway. Item number eight, SUP 35734, applicant, Jeweler Manufacturers Exchange, Inc., owner, Durango Commons, LLC, to add a jewelry store class three use to an existing jewelry store at 8550 West Charleston Boulevard. Item nine, SUP 35755, applicant, United States Veterans Initiative, owner, 610 LLC, et al., for a proposed social service provider at 610 North Las Vegas Boulevard. Are there any items that anybody else wish to have pulled from this item or anything? Okay. Uh, this I these items are listed at public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak on these items? Seeing no one will close public hearing. 
Motion. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the one motion, one vote item subject to all staff's recommendations and conditions. Please cast your vote. <clears throat> And those are approved. And they go forward to council on November 4th. Item six, GPA 35729, Applicant City of Las Vegas, Owner Live Work, LLC et al. To amend the master plan of streets and highways and modify map 2A of the transportation and streets and highways element of the Las Vegas 2020 master plan to add a secondary collector to collect Bonneville Avenue with to connect Bonneville Avenue with Clark Avenue between Casino Center Boulevard and First Street and to reclassify Bonneville Avenue from an 80-foot secondary collector to a 125-foot parkway arterial between Casino Center Boulevard and Main Street. Good evening, uh, Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Greg McDermott. I'm with the City of Las Vegas Public Works Department uh, representing this application. Um, this application is a general plan amendment, uh, as you described, to amend the city's master plan of streets and highways. The, um, just to, before I go much further, just to orient you with uh, where we're at, uh, we're at uh, north, is towards the top here. This is Bonneville, this is Clark, Main Street, and Las Vegas Boulevard. This amendment tonight deals specifically with this new connector road between Clark to Bonneville and to amend the right-of-way width on Bonneville um, between uh, Casino Center and, and Main Street uh, to amend that to a, to a parkway standard 125, it's actually 122 foot right-of-way. Uh, this, this amendment we feel will uh, provide for better, link, better linkage, linkages and connections in the downtown area to allow for better access through the downtown in an east-west fashion. The goals of the project are, like I said, to provide better connectivity through some of the redevelopment areas that are occurring downtown through Sym Symphony Park, the uh, RTC's Bonneville Transit uh, Center, uh, some of the other redevelopment projects that are occurring and along with the, the residential developments that, are, that have occurred and will be occurring. Before I go much further, That, that kind of sums up the, the amendment. What we have is, is an actual project that is under design right now, and it's, it's uh, the first phase of a, of a project. It's called the Bonneville-Clark Couplet System, and this kind of gives you an idea. This is a different perspective here. Las Vegas Boulevard north is, is this way, and uh, Main Street is clear down that way. But uh, what it is, it's... Uh, Bonneville running one way eastbound, Clark one way westbound with the connector and, and the um, two way traffic down on Bonneville uh, that, that connects into Main Street. I'll give you a little perspective on, on what the project is within, within these rights of way, the existing rights of way. We're uh, looking at actually in portions narrowing up the, the roadway. Uh, currently, the pavement is wide enough for four lanes of traffic. We would narrow it up a little bit to allow three lanes of traffic with bicycle lanes, a little bit wider sidewalk areas, trees, street lights to, uh, that, that adhere to the city's downtown centennial standards. Um, let's see. And then uh, this is the first phase, like I said, of an overall plan. This is the only phase right now that's currently funded, and um, in regards to the uh, widening or the plan to widen Bonneville Street uh, between uh, Casino Center and Main, currently today the, the traffic volumes don't widen, don't merit the widening. We're, we're going to stick to the four lanes of travel. Travel. This is a left-hand turn lane there, and we can do what we need within the current 80-foot right-of-way there. Um, as demands increase downtown, as, as uh, the warrants become uh, available, this, would, this, this amendment would allow us to widen that portion of Bonneville to this 122-foot standard, giving us more room. Now, at this time, we want to be clear that we don't have any intent on what or 
any uh, project right now, I guess, to widen to the 122. We simply want to put it on the master plan of streets and highways. Um, our city attorney's office has advised us, you know, that this is this is no announcement to condemn or begin uh, any right-of-way acquisitions in this area. It's just a plan, as we've done a lot of times before. And um, I believe that pretty much covers the project. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. This is advertised to public hearing. Anybody wish to speak on the side and please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Elizabeth Gonham. I'm here on behalf of the property owners, Vicki Ham, the Ham Pedo Trust, and also Joan Huey. They own the property that is on the corner of Maine and Bonneville, and it's the northeast property. It's the corner. We are here to object on the widening of the street from the 80 foot to the 122, 125 foot. Don't have an issue with the couplet. Um, we want to bring just a, a few things to your attention. In, in 2005, in July of 2005, there was a cup, the same couplet issue, although located more on the current owner's property in a different alleyway closer to the Main Street Bonneville, and that was brought before the City Council. At that time, the City Council requested there be 25 conditions met in order to add the couplet and other plants. Now, I wasn't privy to that meeting, so I don't know all the details of it, but I do know that there were conditions set. So the first question I have is whether those conditions have, in fact, been met. Additionally, I feel that since we have the city stating that they do not have any plans for any projects, we feel that there's no necessity in widening the Bonneville streets from the current two-lane each way to the three-lane. Because what that does is it takes over, we believe, although we don't have the exact measurements, 50% of the corner lot. And so placing the plan on record would essentially tie the hands of the property owners either for investment or for development, which is something they are now considering development given the turn in the, the economy and the, the downturn it specifically in property. So we would object primarily to that. We've also not seen any analysis, traffic analysis or otherwise, that shows that it is necessary, in fact, to change it from 80 feet to the 122 feet. It also appears from the plans that we've looked at that it's going to go you know, up Bonneville, it'll be 80 feet. Only for that one block, it will increase to 122 feet or 125 feet as in the agenda, and then back again to the 80 feet. At least that's the way it appears. So again, with no plans for projects, no uh, apparently no funding being obtained, we're wondering why, in fact, that's being added at this time, which will affect deeply the, the property owners. I also want to know, I know you don't have the history, and I've, I've only brought four copies. I didn't realize it would be that important for today until recently, the July, 20, the July meeting in 2005 with the conditions that were set. There were promises made by the developer listed as the owner, which I don't know if they're a part of this application or not. I realize it's the city bringing the application. But the Who's same listed by who? The owners are listed as LiveWorks. They're still involved with this project. Yeah, I believe they own the majority of the property, but they don't own the corner lot and the adjacent lot to that property. So um, at that time, they were the ones applying for the couplet and made certain assurances that it would not, in fact, impinge on the property owners. And now we have the couplet moving, but a widening of the streets, which I don't think was part of the plan before, and we're questioning the necessity of it and whether the rest of the conditions set out by the City Council have been met. Perhaps they expire after time, I'm, I'm unaware of that, but whether those have been met and um, the necessity of Do you have a copy of those that you can give the clerk? I do. I have four copies, I can, or three rather, that I can give you. <coughs> I would draw your attention to, to page two uh, where, it, where we have comments by a stipulation on the record by the uh, Mr. Mitchell, who was one of the owners, as I understand it, of LiveWorks, who stipulated that there would be no opposition to locating the one-way couplet in a manner not to impact the other property owners. Um, there were several, I guess, promises made at that time, both in the minutes and then the conditions that were imposed, it's item number 
at that time, agenda item 140 and 141, and you'll see that there's a, at least 25 conditions, one of which required a traffic analysis be submitted and approved prior to submitting any construction drawings or recordation of the map sub subdividing it. So again, with the city here stating on the record that they have no need really to widen it, we're wondering why the plan is being put in effect that will affect future sale of the lot and development. And, and perhaps that's a, a question we can leave open. I think that's a question maybe the city attorney, because I know he's addressed it several times before, can give you at least the perspective of it, because I, I well, normally we've said to the council in the past that just because you put it on the, on, and there's been case law to this effect, that just be, simply because you put it on the master plan of streets and highways does not necessarily implicate any kind of pre-condemnation damages, nor does it implicate any kind of pre-condemnation activity. So we've done this in a number of locations throughout the city for, I don't know how long, Greg. It's uh, been a very long time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and it's never had any effect before. So. Uh, we haven't experienced the type of thing that this uh, this person is uh, alleging that would occur as a result of putting it on the master plan of streets and highways. Well, I understand that the law in the state of Nevada does not require the government agency to pay for pre-condemnation damages should just upon amendment of the plan. We also are faced with a situation where the plan itself is of record. So certainly the But the case is, I think, and we've stated on the record that there is currently no project, there's currently no funding for it, but it's just, an, just a, an effort to show what could be located at this particular location, and it could be 10, 20, 30 years in the future. That's the problem we have, because no. it could be, t or, or, or perhaps never. That's the very nature of a master plan of streets and highways, so that's but, the very nature. But this does not prevent you from bringing forth a development plan for your property. So and it would be, at that point, it would be dealt with. The plan could the plan. be amended again at that time. I, well, I don't know if it even requires to be amended. It, it won't be amended when that person comes in for an application, but it could be amended by the city if, in fact, there is a development in the way. So I guess I'm questioning, or the landowners are questioning why, in fact, the plan has to be provided at this time to increase it for the 122 feet when there is no project relating to it and no ne necessity showing that, that it needs to be widened for that one block only. Surprisingly, in, in the city's view, and and I subscribe to this in many aspects, and some I don't, uh, with, as it relates to private properties. Where there's significant improvements planned in potential future, um, it's important to let property owners know, like every other, other developer would know, this is what this roadway may look like. It, it doesn't mean that that's the final designs are done. It doesn't mean that somebody can't use their property the way they want to. It doesn't mean you couldn't come in with a project a year from now and and be successful in, in getting that approved and go ahead and develop it. It's just, but it would be imprudent on the city's part not to let people know that we see this as a, a potential arterial grade intersection in the future based on what's at both ends of this couplet. So I, in, in one regard, I, I want to tell you, I think the city does the right thing in trying to be proactive and telling everybody up front. On the other side, it sometimes when there's just, there's no level of project that you know that's going to be at both ends, and it's just a blue line on one of the maps, I tend to think that maybe is different, more along the argument you have. Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly agree. I understand that um, out of precaution, the city needs to provide notice to all of the landowners, but we wanted to state the objection for the record and feel that it is unnecessary to widen the road or to lay the plan to widen the road when there are no projects at this time and, and there is no analysis by traffic, a traffic analysis or otherwise that I guess provides the support for widening the one block and going back to the, from the 80 to the 80 and just for that narrow strip widening it. So uh, we wanted to state it at this stage early on our objection and let you know that we will continue to, I guess, object. But thank, thank you. you for noting on the record that they couldn't, in fact, go forward with the plans because that was a, a consideration. And staff will be glad to keep you and your uh, clients informed as to what trans, you know, moves forward along in that area. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other comments or questions with regards to this item? Now close public hearing. Uh, commissioners, comments? Chairman, move to follow staff's recommendation for approval of GPA 35729, substall staff's recommendations and conditions. Cash your vote. The 
If that is approved, then that will go on to City Council on November 4th. Thank you. Thank you. Now we go to public hearing items. Number 10, SDR 32534, applicant owner, MFE Inc., major amendment to an approved site development plan review, SDR 5893, for a proposed 3,600 square foot convenience store with fuel pumps and 1,300 square feet of retail with waivers of the town center commercial development standards, landscaping and streetscape standards, where a 3,500 square foot convenience store with fuel pumps was approved at the southeast corner of Tenea Way and Azure Drive. Good evening. Uh, oh, oh, they get to go first. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, this request was obeyed from the September 10th Planning Commission meeting. Uh, it would amend the previously approved site development plan review to reduce the area of the convenience store and add an additional general retail space to the proposed building. Minor site changes have been made to accommodate parking and amenity requirements. As the site complies with Title 19, the previously approved site development plan review and is compatible with the surrounding uses, staff is recommending approval of this request. A neighborhood meeting was held on October 1st and has resulted in the following added conditions. Uh, number one, no outdoor payphones shall be installed on site. Number two, all signage facing Tenea Way shall be backlighted. Number three, any other lighting on the east elevation of the building shall be shielded and directed downward. Number four, no outdoor public address system shall be installed beyond the system customarily installed with the fuel pumps. And number five, the site shall be chemically treated to reduce the number of insects prior to grading. Uh, if denied, the previously approved site development plan review will remain in effect. Thank you. Good evening. Okay, good evening. Um, Jemmy Nisley, GK3 Architecture, 2111 Edgewood Avenue. And uh, I think we had a successful neighborhood meeting. We're in agreement with all conditions uh, staff just read, and I'm happy to answer any questions. This was advertised public hearing. Anybody here wish to speak on the side and please come forward. Seeing none, close public hearing. Commissioners? Um, explain in the public, or in your public meeting, did everybody address the size and, I mean, this thing grew much larger than what it was originally anticipated. Uh, <clears throat> the neighbors had spent a significant amount of time working with the previous developer and uh, when they saw a new applicant, they just wanted to review the site and make sure that the conversations that they had with that developer, those issues were addressed with this design. and. Uh, one of the, the primary concerns was that the building is located in the northeast corner of the site and that uh, the, the lighting and that was not a nuisance to the neighbors. So our design did meet those requirements and the neighbors were happy with the way that this design addressed the previous concerns that they had had while working with the other developers. So I think it was more of wanting to know and be aware of what, what was being proposed for the site before supporting a, um, an, a new application. The size was not their concern. It was the location mainly of the, the building on the site. Now, this shows um, uh, plaza area on the north side of the building. Yes. And I suspect that's outside seating, planned for outside seating potentially? Benches and, and that type of thing, yeah. Um, not, not, not like a, a restaurant type seating. Because, I mean, I look at this and I still see a pretty intense site. You know, I, that's why I was curious to what the other comments were raised by the neighbors. Um, their, their issues were also sound, that loud music wouldn't be played. Like, for instance, a terrible herps at the, pups, pu at the pumps has music and, and TVs playing continuously. So lighting and noise and location of the building were the concern. The, the size and, and the function of the site were, were not. What kind of con – who's the convenience operator here? Uh, it's going to be an ARCO. Okay. One of the neighbors did request diesel. <laughs> it's not terrible herbs. No. Marco? Okay. Um, Wait, look, can you can you speak a little bit more about the plaza area? What's that going to be used for again? It's a required uh, town center requirement, uh, so it's the area allotted to meet uh, zoning code. So, so is that going to be grassed or landscaped? Uh, right now, we're thinking stamped concrete or pavers. 
with surrounding uh, landscape. But the, the area with the pattern I'm showing on the site plan is a hard surface. Thank you. Mr. Flangus, you have any questions? If there are other questions, motion. Mr. Chairman, move to follow staff's recommendation for approval of SDR 32534, subject to all staff's recommendations and conditions. As amended. As amended. Thank you. Please catch your vote. And that is approved, and that will go on to City Council on October or November 4th. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Item 11, ZON 35723 Applicant, YB or YSBM Investments, LLC, from C1 Limited Commercial and C2 General Commercial to C2 General Commercial at 1150 South Las Vegas Boulevard. Related item, SUP 35724, for a hotel residence extended stay. Um, I know this... I'm going to abstain on this item because I do own property in the notice area. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this request for a special use permit is to allow the existing hotel on the subject site to rent rooms for extended stay lodging. The proposed use will not increase the parking requirement for the site. However, a condition has been added to require that handicapped spaces comply with current Title 1910 standards. Uh, the residence hotel use is appropriate for the site and can be conducted in a manner that is compatible with the existing surrounding uses. Uh, the site is currently split zoned and the proposed rezoning is necessary to establish consistent zoning for the entire site. Staff is recommending approval of both requests. Uh, please note that there are additional letters of protest and support for these items. Thank you. Applicant? Dennis Rusk, Architect, uh, now 3530 West Torino Avenue, representing the applicant. We agree with staff's recommendations. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience want to speak for or against this item? Please come forward. Good evening. Uh, Mike Ganson, 1100 South 6. Um, I have a question. I was wondering, the, the extended stay uh, designation, will that allow people to stay there that would receive assistance from any city, uh, county, state or federal uh, assistance? We'll, we'll get an answer for you. Apka? Well, if I can, on the what? land use definition, it has nothing to do with where the funding comes from. Well, I mean, can they get that kind of funding now f uh, to stay at the place, or can, once they have an extended stay designation, would they then be eligible to receive assistance, uh, you know, public assistance to uh, stay in the place. I was, I'm concerned about that. Uh, again, the public assistance has nothing to do nothing with the right. land use. Right. So it, there's it's, just, it's just the amount of time that the person can stay at that particular um, lodging establishment, okay. but I'm not sure how they would pay for it. That, that's what you're asking. Well, you yeah, pay for it? I'm just wondering um, whether or not there are any kind of um, requirements um, in the city where they, people can receive assistance to stay in any uh, sort of legal... Mr. Chairman, if I could. Go ahead. Since, it's, since it's a private entity that's uh, creating this extended stay, they would be responsible for getting the payment from whomever is staying at that location. I'm not sure exactly how they would get the money, if it would be through a grant or something of that nature. But normally it's people just a monthly type of stay. That's correct. So yeah. I'm not sure how they would get the money, though, if that's what you're asking. Well, yeah, I just was concerned whether or not the city was going to be financially involved with the... No. <laughs> No, we're not. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't uh, clearly outlined. And the other question I have is uh, about the um, adult bookstore across the street, and it's just sort of um, kind of a, been a problem in the community there. And now that we're you're opening it up to uh, people with extended stay, that um, we'd already had a problem with a hotel down the street over by the OG that was, uh, I guess, a sore and quite a few people's somewhere and um, <laughs> I'm just wondering if uh, now that this might um, open that up some more due to the problem of um, the, adult, uh, the adult bookstore being allowed to operate in this uh, residential area and all with the 
with the proposed changes that we have in the community. Yeah, I think that if I could, Jim, I think that was a that was a hourly type of motel. I don't believe this is the same type of activity that would that would occur. <laughs> this is more of a monthly that you could say. That I still understand that, but still the idea that there are. You know, numerous problems uh, with associated with that business, and the idea that uh, uh, the, the uh, metro hasn't been able to, um, I guess, put a lid on their activity down there. Um, I'm just making this applicant aware of the, the potential problem that goes on in that neighborhood, and we don't want to see you know him lose his property, as that all those other people did due to you know their management or mismanagement, however you want to look at it. Uh, that they're aware of that uh, problem of that adult bookstore being there. Well, I can but, assure you that my you. clients have no interest in having any kind of adult activity in their motel. Well, it's closed doors, but you know. It's, uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's it's just a concern. I live in the neighborhood, and it's just a concern. And I was wondering, uh, the commercial um, change from are you going to have a other retail venture in there or is there just going to be just extended stay or excuse me sir if you can direct your questions to me i'll oh, okay i'm sorry get him sorry to look at them. For you. Uh, yeah. i'm concerned whether or not there's going to be other types of retail venture there when they're changing the zoning or does the, the zoning for extended stay encompass um, the new designation okay maybe you could what is it currently today it's a it's a motel okay can you tell us a little bit about the operation and, and what the extended stay is going to to include? Well, the extended stay is only for the, you know, we're going to put some kitchenettes, and it would be for someone to stay there weekly or monthly rather than just overnight. But there is no retail in, this, in the um, motel at all. It's, it's simply going to be a change from an overnight motel to a weekly monthly for a percentage of the rooms because of the downturn in the economy so that they can keep making their their mortgage payments but there is absolutely no retail involved in this thing whatsoever thank you my last one is is, is that the people are going to be there on a monthly basis that I, i'm con still concerned about this adult bookstore and the idea that there might be children there that this isn't well, an 18 or I mean, it's just, it's a well, sore thumb there. Well, I, mean, sore, I mean, it's an extended stay, and I, and I mean, the extended stay, if approved today, will be properly licensed. I'm sure the adult bookstore is properly licensed. Um, I would say to venture that if somebody extended stays and comes out on Las Vegas Boulevard and walks across to that store, I don't think they can control that. That's not my point. My, my point is is that there's been uh, quite a bit of illegal activity going on there. The city has not addressed that problem, or they have attempted to, but the idea is is that uh, uh, I would just hate to have something happen to these people that were given the idea that this is an extended stay, that it is a safe neighborhood, and uh, that the idea that we have this uh, venture, this adult bookstore in this residential neighborhood is not appropriate. Even though it has been grandfathered in, I think that they should be given an opportunity to um, be placed in, a, uh, in an area that is consistent with the zoning that we have current today. That okay. they really don't have a right to be down there and have this extended stay where someone would come stay there with the guys that uh, the city council said it's okay to stay there when we all know that it's not um, a savory place. Okay. That that adult bookstore attracts a lot of problems in that community. Your, your comments are on the record, but if you um, want to complain about that, there's avenues to take through the city as well. Oh, I understand. Uh, call the code enforcement office. Oh, yeah. um, if you see unsavory uh, uh, business going on, call the Metropolitan Police. Oh, yes. Uh, but, but we can't shut it down. Well, it's just the idea that you're, you're actually uh, condoning that this extended stay is appropriate across from a business that we all know that has a problem. But it's currently a motel now, and it's been a motel for a number of years. Well, we know, you know. And it, so, and it's properly zoned, okay. and and that's well, why it's, he's it's here. Well, it's not properly zoned because they could not get the zoning there now. That's what the problem is. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Thank you. I just, 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 all parties aware. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak on this item? Any of these items? So, 
Kevin, maybe while she's coming up, I think if Margot can correct me too, if, if I'm incorrect, the C2 zoning gives them the right to do the extended stay, but it's properly zoned C1 for the motel that currently exists there? Currently, the, the property is split zoned, and so we're trying to correct that problem. I believe the use is allowed in either C1 or C2. So the rezoning is not because of the use, it's because of a, a problem with the property. It's principally housekeeping to make it all. Yes, ma'am. Veronica Holmes, Litvak. Um, I have a couple of questions because this is the first I'm hearing of this and I did not receive notification for some reason. Uh, when they Your say address, extended please? 2005 Pinto Lane, uh, when they say extended stay, is this weekly or monthly? And uh, what are the rent rates going to be? And is this open to tourists or locals? Is this going to be low rent housing in actuality? Or I mean, there's a lot of questions I'd like to ask since we have a great deal of investment down on Colorado Street right around the corner from it where we operate our businesses. Okay. I'll ask the applicant. Do you yes. know the rates? And I do not know the rates, but it's just weekly, monthly. Okay. And it's for tourists as well as, uh, but it's not meant to be any kind of low income housing or anything else of that nature. It's a motel that is extending the stay from overnight to either a full week or a full month, but that's the extent of it. Okay. So is it for locals or tourists? I think he said both. Is it, is it like a budget suite? No. Is that, is that where we're going? No, it is not. It, it's it's just a motel that's going to have instead of overnight stay, weekly or monthly stay, principally for out of towners and tourists. It's you know it's not meant for locals unless they become homeless and need a place to stay for a month while they get themselves reorganized. But it's only for a maximum of a month. It's weekly, monthly. So when he says, when you said, no, I think I'm I, on I top think you're going to ask that yeah. question for me. So, so when you when you say homeless and stay for a month until you get back on your feet, I mean, ex well, explain well, that a little about bit more. Is, please. is a transition where someone's lost a house and they're waiting for an apartment to get open. That that type of person. So isn't that going to require some money? Do 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 you have a? Does, does one check into this just like any motel or hotel? Is there a application process or something to, to stay for a month? Do you do a credit check or a background check or anything like that? Is there on-site security going to be on this property? Uh, security, yes. The, the owner will answer the first question. Thank you. Your name and address? My name is Yair Ben Moshe, and I uh, 2286 Trafalgar Court, Henderson, Nevada. Um, uh, to the first question, I would like to comment. First of all, it is a motel, and we'll continue to operate it as a motel, and we're offering continental breakfast, and we clean the rooms and change sheets. So the situation is that we're not going to allow anybody to come in for a week or a month and not treat them as we treat any guests that come to town for one day. So it will be just allowing us, allow the guests to stay over a week or, or a month if you wish to. We're not planning to, to act it like a budget suite. Just check you in, check your credit. There is no credit check. You must have a credit card in order to check in. The operation is completely clean, and we have to comply with Choice Hotel. Part, we are franchise of uh, part of Choice Hotel. So we have to live under their regulations, and every, ten, every, uh, uh, every person that check into the room will be treated as a hotel guest. Thank you. And we're offering breakfast and the whole menu. Okay. May I? I'd still Any like to questions? address the rental rates. Okay. Sir, can you? I can't comment on that. I can't set up a price. It's all depend on occupancy. You know, if, if I'm going to have 80% occupancy, my rates go up to the sky. But as it is today, I have 10, 15% some days that my, I have, the hotel is completely empty. I'll offer the rooms for two, $300 a week. I don't know. It's, it's all depend on on the time of the economy. I mean, hotels, five stars hotel offering today $30, $40 a night. What a motel like me can do? The only option I have is to shut it down. Thank so you. So I can't really comment on that. Is there a way to put this in the bands till they have a chance to talk to some of the neighbors that are equally concerned down there in the area?
Well, I, I think it's been properly noticed. I, I personally don't see much opposition to to it. Uh, I, I don't have a feel at this time to hold it. I think we should go ahead and act on it. Okay. Thank what, you. What I time. may do is 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 ask the maker of the motion to maybe um, put a review of review on it, maybe come back and look at it in six months or one year and see see how the operation's going. Cool. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. For your time. Is there anybody else like to speak on this item? Just, uh, Seeing none. Oh. If you want to speak, please come on down. Because I there's two microphones here. You're you're welcome to occupy both of them. Good evening. My name is Lance Rake. It's L A U N C R A K E. I live in the uh, Hunt Ridge area, uh, close to downtown, and I work in downtown on 6th Street. I uh, appreciate the need for extended hotel, stay hotels in the downtown area, but I'd like you to keep in mind that uh, this approval could have a detrimental impact on the effort to redevelop and lift up development in the Arts District close by. Particularly, I think that what we're going to see if we continue on the path of allowing extended ho stay hotels throughout the swath that goes from Bonanza all the way through downtown, because we have quite a few in the downtown area, down south of Charleston, that's going to have a negative impact on the ability to attract the sort of nightclubs, restaurants, galleries, and the kind of nightlife that we really want to see down there in the Arts District. So I ask you to keep that in mind as you go forward, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, for the record, my address is 1234 South 17th Street. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rake. Next, please. Cindy Funkhauser, 1228 South Casino Center Boulevard. Um, I am a business owner and live about two blocks from this project. I've lived in that area for 13 years. Um, I've seen many of these weekly motels. Uh, I'm two blocks away from several of them as I would be from this one. The police visit them with a great deal of frequency because there are many problems associated with typically the, the people that will stay there. And you know, two to three hundred dollars a week is not something that's going to help a family that has been kicked out of their house for foreclosure. I mean, you know, they can get to, into an apartment for seven to eight hundred dollars. I don't think they're going to come there and stay. And I think it's completely detrimental to uh, people like myself and these others who have lived and worked very hard to create something. And I do live in the arts district as well. And we, we've already seen they had, they just closed a strip motel last year. And that was because it was a weekly motel and because there were police there every single day. And there's one, two blocks from me, police there every single day. So I wish this would be seriously considered because it's, it's just not a productive use for that area, especially to make any improvements. Thank you. Hello, Steve Franklin, 556 Ellen Way. Um, I also uh, object to the project uh, as well. Uh, I also feel it's a little bit uh, detrimental to the area. There is a very solid single-family neighborhood that's a block away from this project. And all I ask is for you to consider this um, and to kind of do unto others as you have done unto you. Um, and I can just about assure, and I've not done my research, but I can just about guarantee you that there's not one single person on this planning commission that lives within a block or two or five or six of a weekly rental place. And you all have your reasons for that. And I would like to be, consider that whenever you do your vote. Thanks. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak for or against this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. I'll open up to comments and questions from the board. Commissioner Evans? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I had a, a couple of questions, but I think they've been answered by the applicant. And I, I can appreciate uh, your application and what you're trying to do. Um, I don't know whether we met once before, but I did meet someone who was associated uh, with the property in the past. And uh, uh, I, from what you've said in your justification letter, uh, the majority of the reason you want to do this is because of the downturn in the economy and you want to be able to compete. So if I'm not mistaken, you want to convert 40 of the 120 motel rooms to an extended stay hotel type concept. Um, and on its face, I, I understand that, but I took a look at the majority of the other extended stay properties throughout the city and, and in the county specifically. 
Um, and it was, it's my experience and from what I saw, other than those that are very high end, you know, the, the embassy suites type places that clearly wouldn't meet your demographic, um, they often can be a haven for mischief. Um, I, I think, um, I, I can't think of a single location where you've used an aging property um, where that's been a benefit to the community. I did want to point out that I believe you're asking for a, a zone change, which basically will bring it into conformance, and it sounds like it's more of a cleanup because it's both the C1 and C2. And I really don't have an objection to that. I think that would meet the, uh, the centennial plan. Um, and then the second aspect of your application is the important part, and that's a special use permit, which would allow you to, to function as an extended stay uh, type of property. Um, but it is a special use permit, and, and that's where I think we need to look at this. It's a special use permit by its very nature is not an absolute right. It is, it's special. And the governing body, I think, is given a lot of discretion in how they can apply or grant or deny uh, a special use permit. And we get to consider uh, potential impacts on surrounding businesses, parcels, neighborhoods, et cetera. Um, and secondly, and probably most importantly, I would note that this application of yours for the special use permit is within the redevelopment district. And the goals of the redevelopment district, are, quite simply put, I think, are basically to take areas of our city that we've determined that would be ripe for redevelopment. We want to bring in good development. Um, we want to revitalize and provide that renaissance. Some of the people that spoke here this evening, Ms. Uh, Veronica Litvick Holmes, or Holmes Litvick, uh, she owns the Gypsy Caravan, founder of the Little Antique Village a block away. Uh, Cindy Funkhauser has her store and uh, founder of First Friday. They're both known to me. Steve Franklin is an activist and a realtor. Uh, I mean, all these people, Lance Rig, all of them have an investment in, in this surrounding area. And I've gotten a number of calls on this. Um, I think they make a good argument that does this application, does this special use permit foster the goals of redevelopment? Does it encourage good development to come forward? We've got some really good things happening in that area, even in the downturn economy. Even this evening, the, as we speak, there's an opening of an outstanding new gallery um, where the owner has put a substantial commitment into an area where no one else is building. Um, I fear that your application, and if this went forward, would pull back that. It would, it would, it would inhibit that kind of development that we're seeking. I, I absolutely understand what you want to do, uh, but I'm, I, I absolutely disagree with the fact that I think it would foster the goals of redevelopment. And I was looking at the uh, redevelopment plan objectives. It says the purposes of the community redevelopment law will be attained through and the major objectives of this plan are, and then I circled a couple of them, the elimination of environmental deficiencies and blight in the redevelopment area which constitute either social or economic liabilities or both and require development in the interest of the health, safety, and general welfare of the people, including, among others, small and or irregular lots, obsolete and aged building types, economic and social deficiencies, deteriorated public improvements, inadequate parking facilities, inadequate utilization of land and public facilities, and then C, the replanning, redesign, and development of undeveloped areas which are stagnant or improperly utilized, and D, the strengthening of retail, office, and other commercial and residential functions in the downtown area. So my question is, if this were approved, does your special use permit foster the goals of the redevelopment? Will it help attain the, the financial interest and commitment of the redevelopment and will further our goals of revitalizing downtown? And I absolutely can't see based on the experiences of having looked at many of these other um, uh, extended stay type operations, uh, I don't see that happening. I think this would be a real step backward. Um, I'd like to address and answer your question. Uh, as which, an architect, which question? 
Pardon? Which, Which question? question? The latest question regarding the development for the downtown centennial plan. Uh, under my direction with my clients, we have dressed up the front of this facade and added landscaping that's completely consistent and design that's consistent with the downtown centennial plan. He's also invested a great deal of money in, in painting and also, as you can see, this stone veneer to dress it up. They've done it recarpeting. They've upgraded the interior the spaces to make it an attractive and, a, and appealing space. This is not a single owner. This is part of a franchise as well for Econo Lodge, and they have very strict rules both in their architectural direction as well as the way that they run the facility. They've never had a single complaint. This is not the kind of thing where but, it's a mom and pop the, operation. With all due respect, you've not had a single complaint operated as a motel. An extended stay, I think, would be different. When I went into the county and I looked at one of the extended stay projects that's also a chain and also has allegedly standards which they're supposed to adhere to, I won't mention the name, but its initials are BS. Um, they, they've they ruined the neighborhoods, probably not by design, but it certainly has been the unintended consequence. This area is fairly fragile, but it's ripe for redevelopment. So I, I Under the proper economic times, I agree with you. Well, we're not supposed we to be able to look at economic considerations. The fact that you're... You, okay. You're not liking what I'm saying, but I'm just telling you what my belief is. I'm not liking the economy today that's put me out of business. Well, or close you know, to it. none of us do. None of us but do. We so should not be granting zoning issues based on the need to, to succeed in business. It, it's, if we do that, I fear, and I'm, this is my fear, we are going to go down this road, and in a few years, hopefully this economy will rebound, and I think we will have made mistakes because over and over again we're seeing applications that are insufficient, deficient, substandard, but the argument is you've got to give us this in order to, to be profitable. So, I mean, I, I just don't think from our perspective, from my perspective, you want me to push a button and vote for you. I don't see this fostering redevelopment downtown. Will it help your client? Probably. I, I would suspect it would. Uh. If I may comment on that, please. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I appreciate uh, everybody's complaint and concern because I own property in the immediate area as well, uh, beside this property. And um, I renovate this hotel, and I purchased this hotel for one reason, for the dirt itself and to redevelop it. My intention is not to run a motel on the strip. I own other properties in town, and I'm not in a hotel business. So you want it I, in the short term? I, I bought it as a short term. I bought it two years ago. I never had any police complaint or any police visit. I never had any problem on site. Well, how I long have you owned it, sir? Two years. Did you, so obviously you bought it after the terrorists were there and, you know. And after the what? It's <laughs> okay. I mean, wasn't it the, I mean, it has nothing to do with this application, but. Clearly, the, the hotel, the motel has a history, so. Absolutely, and has a good history. And it's been part of choice, and the hotel used to make good money out there. Now, just to, just to be more specific, I put almost a million dollars in room renovation. I changed the entire uh, furniture in every room. We put plasma TVs. Believe me, I'm not going to occupy that place with people that will destroy it. I'm not going to put any kids in there. Well, who would stay there? I, I don't want to any, argue with you, but who would today, stay there at 300 bucks a month or 200 today a week? I can, or rather? I can rent this room per the zoning weekly without questioning, without showing up here. I can still rent it week by week, and I'm still comply with the law. I'm just coming here and saying I have people that comes to me who would like to stay a little longer. These are people that in transit. This is people that come and look for job in Vegas. I have a lot of people from the city center they're going to be out of job in two months from now, and they don't want to rent and commit it to six months in, in, in a hotel. These are construction people. There's nothing wrong with these people. Well, I, I mean, I, so have to have do, do you have any meeting space over there, or are you just strictly? No. no okay. I don't have, no. I, my thing is, I'm hearing you say you've, you've put money into it, you've got plasma TVs in the rooms. Um, I don't think the neighbors that are, that are complaining have probably even went over there and looked at it. Uh -huh. um, I. 
think I'm going to go back and maybe entertain holding this like the one of the neighbors asked to have a neighborhood meeting and maybe the neighbors and you could sit there and 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 maybe come to some happy medium. Absolutely. Is, is that something you're them. agreable Absolutely. with? Yes. Well, Commissioner I, Goins, I, before we hold it, I, Commissioner may, may I ask just a question of Mr. Rusk, please? Um, the condition under staff recommendations is for you to add four handicapped parking places. Of the 120 total rooms, can you tell me how many are disabled friendly for someone in a wheelchair to stay in your hotel per code, please? This particular hotel was built long before the American Disabilities Act was granted. But, sir, you've done a lot of renovations, okay. and I kind of know a little no, bit no, about this. No, we have this. not done any renovations inside the hotel rooms at all. Adding a kitchen is considered a when, renovation. When we add the kitchens, I anticipate that we will bring a percentage to meet the handicap requirements. But that's only if we have the consideration of going forward. Well, I can tell you that my consideration is if someone in a wheelchair comes off the street who probably doesn't have a great job and they can probably can afford to stay there, I would hope when you have four handicapped parking places that you have a room to give that person because without that you will never see my support no matter what neighborhood it's in. If you'd like to make that a condition, I'm sure we can accommodate that. Thank you. I would... Uh, anyway, let me ask you, Mr. Just, Evans, are you... Go ahead. Well, I... This is your ward. Go ahead. Well, I can appreciate maybe having a meeting, but I'm not sure that's going to change the fact that what you have is an application for a special use permit for something that I don't see fostering the goals of the redevelopment agency. So I don't see that ch changing anything. Um, okay. Perhaps if you had reached out, you might have gotten a little bit of a, a different view, but I suspect not. Um, I've gotten lots of calls on this. I would imagine as it goes before the city council that there will be either additional support or opposition. My suspicion it would be incredible opposition um, based on the numbers of people who have called me about this. Again, I appreciate the fact that you want to uh, run your business and make a profit. I think this is the wrong location, the wrong business type. It's a special use permit, and uh, I, I'm prepared to move forward with this. I'm, I think just a, another meeting would delay the process further, or if you wanted, you can have the opportunity between now and the city council to reach out to people and explain how this will help them. Any more comments or questions from the commissioners? Okay. Mr. Evans, it's well, your award. I'll defer for you to you for the motion. Well, I again with the with the zoning, I don't really have an issue with the zoning. I think it just brings it into compliance because if I'm not mistaken, it's one parcel that has two separate zoning designations. So my motion would be for approval of the zoning, which would bring it into conformance. Motion's on the floor for approval of item 11. Please cast your vote. And that motion has passed, and that will go on to City Council on November the 4th. And with regard to the special use permit, as again, as I stated, I think a record has been made. Um, I absolutely don't see this fostering the goals of the redevelopment uh, objectives or redevelopment uh, efforts in this city. Um, and as much as I would like to see this gentleman uh, succeed, I think perhaps there are other models that can help you achieve that. So uh, my motion would be to deny the special use permit 35724. Okay. Item 12 is a motion to deny. Uh, yes vote will be to deny the application. Please cast your votes. And that motion has passed to deny. Okay. And that also goes forward to council on November 4th. Yes. And you actually have, I believe, as Margo, 10 days to appeal. No, that this does go forward because it's a companion to a zoning item. Gotcha. So it automatically goes forward. So we're going for the, the mayor and council on November 4th. November That's 4th. Correct. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And a, just a recommendation that you reach out to your neighbors and talk to them and, you know. I'm sure my clients will do everything. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 13, VAR 35742. Applicant owner Dale and Francis Reese 
to allow a proposed 2,880 square foot accessory structure class two, where 1,445 square feet is allowed at 6150 Grand Teton. Mr. Chairman, the opposed, uh, proposed accessory structure is non-habitable and will be used for storage purposes. As there is no unique circumstance regarding the property that necessitates constructing an accessory structure that exceeds code requirements, staff recommends denial. Uh, if denied, the proposed accessory structure cannot be built or will have to be redesigned to meet Title 19 requirements. Please note that one additional protest and one additional letter of support were received for this item. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, yes, my name is Frances Reese at 6150 Grand Teton Drive. Um, the variance was for uh, larger than evidently our house. And uh, as we do have uh, vehicles that we wanted to put into the structure and have a um, uh, workshop and um, it, it the the structure would not be a detriment to the area. It would look just like the house. It would be a stucco outside with a uh, tile roof. It would have three garage doors. Uh, it, it would be located in the rear of the property. Uh, that... would be um, directly behind the house. It is a three-quarter lot. There is uh, a buffer between the uh, house and the, and the uh, proposed structure. I, we have a, a large semi-trailer in the back. We wanted to empty that of our tools get it into a, a building. We have uh, another storage out, out there that we have uh, antique furniture in that we're trying to get out of the heat element. We do have some classic cars that we need to have some place to park and we have a friend that has one of our cars that they may lose their property so we need some place to park that also and I uh, I was hoping that it would be approved. Thank you. This was advertised public hearing. Is there anybody else here who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing no one, I'll close public hearing. Um, have you talked to your neighbors? Do you have any yes, kind of I, I, uh, like a petition or a letter from your neighbors in support? Or I I talked to um, the neighbor surrounding in front and in back, and I know that I didn't realize it. Uh, and beside me. And I didn't realize that I had any that, that were opposed to the to the variance. Thank you. Commissioners, comments? Are there are there anyone is there anyone opposed to this? Uh, no one's here. Uh, that was my question because I actually I like the idea that you've stuccoed it and normally these things are I really don't I'm, like because they I'm look not. like sheds and but I saw in the staff report where um, you were providing stucco, and it does seem excessively large, but if it's not visible and your neighbors don't object to it, I wouldn't no. personally have any objection. I don't know what my... We're showing yeah, two... There's two, mo there's two um, support letters in there with yeah. the application. So. And I believe those two are the people right behind... Where on the, Ackerman? There's two support yes, behind, on Ackerman. Yes. And the, those... those they're, the one is right behind where we live, and the other one is to the side of where we live. Okay. So we have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll go ahead and move for approval of um, item 13, VAR 35742, subject to all staff's recommendations and conditions. And while that's being done, I just want to say there's just been a major upgrade of the street improvements out there. Oh, it's and so I know a lot of neighbors. I, I actually live out in that area. I, so I'm at, I, yeah, I love it. Like it's, Iron Mountain, but I, I know it's probably been a long time coming yes. for the front of your house. So and I yes. actually pass by your house every day. So. <laughs> Ms. Reese, this is a, that was approved, and it is final action in the absence of an appeal. So good okay. luck. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.
Item 14, VAR 35745, applicant owner Daryl R. Parsons and Kathy L. Lenhart to allow a 20-foot front yard setback where 50 feet is the minimum required for a proposed single-family detached dwelling at 5300 Solar Avenue. Mr. Chairman, the subject site contains three residential lots under common ownership. The applicant is proposing to place a manufactured single-family home on the center lot 20 feet from the property line where the RE district requires a 50-foot setback. Staff recommends denial as the lot itself does not hinder placement of the structure such that Title 19 requirements cannot be met. If denied, the dwelling cannot be placed on the property in the location proposed. Please note that we received four additional protests and one additional letter of support for this item. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Catherine Lenhart, and I reside at 5300 Solar Avenue, my property. The reason that we want it where it's located, it's a manufactured home that will actually complement the area uh, as far as it will match the home and the properties. And the reason we only want it set back where we do is so that it's located to where it can enjoy the front yard also. It is on a separate lot. I wish I'd brought pictures. I apologize. But the way the house sits, the two of them will adjoin and use the front yard. And actually, the side area where there's going to be like a sun deck and all that will actually face the street. The 20 feet is from our fence line. Typically, we're about 30 feet off of the road at that point um, from where it will start. And of course, it'll end to where the driveway will be consistent with the existing driveways where they'll have a place for parking for two cars. So obviously, this is advantageous for us for our parking situation. Daryl Parsons, who is my associate and partner, is the one that will be residing in the home. Um, so therefore, we will have actually the two families there on the, uh, on the property. So I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, when we decided to do this, we've tried to pick an area that would be uh, aesthetic and also not kill the trees. So we have quite a few trees on the property. Just huh. put it right there. We, we can see it. There's a camera right above right it. Right here? Yeah. Okay. And you can point as okay. point it out for us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. As you can see, the driveway comes in. It goes to the side here and here, and here's the existing home. Right here, there were very few trees, and right here is where the house will set so that the driveway will actually come in and actually be part of the property as far as, the, you know, Daryl's driving and be able to park two cars there. Again, to put it anywhere else, we were afraid of killing any of the trees. We were trying to keep it as nice. This was not as-is property. It was less than favorable when we got there, but we were happy to have it. And we're just trying to improve it and obviously make it to where it works for us to live there. Uh, we plan on staying for a good long time and just continuing to be a, a benefit to the neighborhood and to the, to the area. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anybody wish to speak on this item, please come forward. Seeing no one close public hearing, commissioners. Is, is there's an existing house on here? Yes, sir. What, what, what's going to happen with that one? I live in that house. And we, re, we redid it. We spent about $70,000 on just the home alone in completely, like, changing the kitchen out, you know, and changing the carpet and putting new tile in it, making it pretty, right, and painting it and making it nice. No real structural changes happened on the house, just simply to make it to where, well, when we bought it, to give you an example, the living room had no carpet in it, had was bare completely bare uh, concrete. There was manure on the entire property so deep that I was having fires on the property as it got moisture, just combustible things that were happening. I had to hose. We had to come in and clear the manure up. It was, it was really <laughs> not in very good shape. And so we've taken it and we're, we're trying to bring it up to what it really should be. And, and we're, we're, you can, know, can you point where you're going to put the manufactured house? Sure. Okay, the manufactured house, there's a fence line that runs right along here. It will be about that. 20 feet in, and okay. it will sit this way. It will sit kind of the rectangular will go this way, and the house will sit this way, and it will face onto the beautiful front yard. If you, I don't know if you've got pictures of looking into the front yard, but there's trees everywhere. It's beautiful. You feel like you left Las Vegas. So then we, we will continue to have this here because it actually will sit just like this because it doesn't kill these trees here. It just sits right in here, like right about like that. So there's a couple of trees here and a couple of trees here that actually my sons went out and cut down already so to see what it would look like. And so this area here is vacant to where it will sit right there. 
won't disturb another thing. We'll probably put some more trees in around and get it kind of where it kind of like looks the same way the house here does to where you have that kind of a feeling where you don't, like I said, left Las Vegas. You talk with your neighbors? Uh, yes, the my neighbor across the street, George. He's a real nice guy, and he didn't seem to have a problem with it. I have one neighbor on one side, which would be uh, Greg Martin. He's Everything's fine with him. Uh, Kathy and Mike, I didn't really speak to them too much, though we did discuss it, but I did not get any negative feedback. Uh, so I don't even know who the opposing good people would be, honestly, to tell you the truth. Just my surrounding neighbors, they just saw it as an improvement to their properties also because obviously it will increase the value of everybody's property. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, let me ask a question, if I may. Mm -hmm. I'm perplexed, and maybe I missed um, part of your presentation, but you've got 3.3 acres, mm -hmm. and you've divided it, I think, subdivided into three lots, three parcels, right? It's all one pro piece of property as far as we're concerned. It is three existing pieces, but we use it as one property. Well, Actually, okay, then what I don't understand is if you've got three plus acres, why can't you just move it back to where it, the setback would be appropriate? You want right. 20 feet where 50 feet is required. Because of you the way... you got three acres. Is there a reason why you can't do that? Mm -hmm. oh, well, I'll, okay, now let me kind of show you. Okay, we've got the main house. Okay, we've got the front yard. And our, our design was, when, when we looked at it and envisioned it when we were looking at the property, was to have the other house sit here on this second, because technically this is the second and this is the third, right? Okay, you've got your first, second, third. And it would sit and we would share the same front yard because we're family, okay? It's kind of like a, a family type thing. Back here, there's a little outbuilding that's already here. This is an arena. We have horses. We've got the horses over here. Um, it's The backyard is... There's a fence that runs down here. So what it would do is it would engulf this area here as where it's inhabited by people and have your home, okay, and, and your dwelling, and he gets to enjoy the trees and all that. Because as you can see, it's kind of sparse here. And so, therefore, Daryl and I both will enjoy the same front yard, the same same beauty, because it is. It's beautiful. Um, and this is left for the livestock and what have you as far as the, you know, the equine type thing. So... Not looking to do anything as far as having any kind of borders or anything like that. It's simply for our use, but it's just kind of how we envisioned it. Is one of the one of the reasons the placements there due to the where the property lines are? It, I mean, it would be still on on a, um, excuse me. My name's Charles Lenhart. We reside the same residence. It's uh, um, it would it would be on separate separate lot ten um, at least ten feet from the uh, um, onto the uh, I believe that's lot. Uh, um, um, I want to say uh, um, 79 um, okay. or 69, but it'll be on a separate lot totally. All right. We really w weren't looking to change yeah, anything of the not. covenant or anything that would that would encompass comp uh, um, the property. We're just looking uh, just to uh, enhance the uh, overall uh, um, the overall value of the property. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Questions? Motion. Staff, what was, what was the reason again for denial? Uh, they could meet the setback requirements. There's nothing with the property itself that is a reason for them to keep it at, yes, at 20 feet. Thank you. Thank you. It's the truth. Okay, T take a shot at it. Conditions are. I think what we're what we're wrestling with here is, you have such a, a an interesting piece of property, three acres. It's a great piece, but it seems like we're squeezing the houses and up to next to each other, and coming with this setback issue that is not the the traditional way of doing this and. Quite honestly, with with a few of the word, of the objections there, it does create some hurdles um, Can I because speak? it is it it just I'm not sure from a pure planning perspective. I'm not sure if it's great planning. It, it may meet your needs, but um, 
So that's why the setback issue has been such a concern. I understand. Uh, can I speak? Sure. When, uh, when you consider that the houses just on the other side of the wall that sits on my property, you probably could be flushing your toilet in one and hearing it in the other one. Um, you know, and that's where I came from living before then. That's where we've got quite a bit of space. It's kind of hard to tell from a, a picture or from that, but honestly, even if you were to split the properties up, say my grandchildren decide they don't want this property anymore and so they've decided they're gonna sell it, someone could come in and still have quite a good parcel of land on the one acre and the second acre, what would happen is they'd have their house on one side and they'd even have an outbuilding in the back. And if you did the last one, they'd have to build a house at this point because my arena sits on it. So. I understand where you're coming from, and I, and I just want to give you the point that the houses are quite a distance away from one another, and they do de technically sit on different lots. It's but it, we just consider it all one piece of property. And you're right; it does serve our purpose. Thank you. Thank you. So, so are you planning in on coming back in for house number three on the third lot? No, sir. No, sir. I'm not. I've just we just purchased this property. It was our design when we were looking around to have this set up this way kind of like, uh, well, it started out like a kind of like a mother-in-law suite type thing and then uh, just decided that it was better just to put something a little bit better on it because obviously it improves the property, it improves the area, and uh, it's just nice. It's, it's a beautiful thing. We went in looking for just a little something and found something that was nicer and decided to put it there and, you know, and that's still, again, our initial idea when, when purchasing the property was to have that other house that would be able to enjoy it. Um, there is no other, you know, the rest of it's going to be designed for equine. So honestly, no, there is no other intention for any other homes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, let me take a shot at this. We'll, we'll see. I'll live with it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move for, a, for approval of variance 35745. Subject to staff's recommendations and conditions. There's a there's a motion. If there are no other comments, please cast your vote. And that is approved. Thank we you. hope it works for you. That is final action. If there's uh, in the absence of appeal, you can go forward. Thank you. Item 15 and 16. Related items, VAR 35746, applicant, AT&T Mobile, or Mobility, owner, Smoke Ranch Center, Equity Partners, LLC, to allow a 112-foot setback where residential adjacency standards require a 185-foot setback for a proposed wireless communication facility stealth design building feature extension at 6000 Smoke Ranch Road. Companion is SUP 35744 for a proposed 62 foot tall wireless communications facility stealth design building mounted at the relocation of three existing antennas. Staff. Mr. Chairman, these requests would allow the applicant to construct a wireless communications facility to appear as part of the existing building structure on the subject site. The tower would be concealed as a raised cupola on top of the front stairwell of the building the communications equipment located within. The height of the tower has resulted in the need for variance to the setback required by residential adjacency standards, which staff can support as the tower is located at the front of the building, away from the residential development to the north, and will have minimal impact on the adjacent development. As the proposed use can be conducted in a manner that is harmonious and compatible with the existing and future surrounding land uses, staff recommends approval of this request. Please note that there is an additional protest for these items. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Commissioner, uh, Chair Preet, excuse me, uh, Commissioners. Um, John Wright for the applicant, 6 Sunset Way, Suite 108B, um, representing AT&T Mobility on this application. Uh, I didn't realize it had been this long, but I was looking through staff recommendation and realized it was November of last year that I was here seeking a approval for a monopine in the parking lot of this particular parcel. and. Uh, that did not uh, pass planning commission and so we went back to the drawing board with the landlord and tried to develop something that the RF engineers could agree to invest uh, to build the site and that would also uh, potentially meet uh, staff and planning commission and also city council uh, approval. So we 
determined that if we could extend an existing cupola, and if you'll refer to the photo that I've placed in front of the camera, I'm not sure if you have that in your package. Uh, the lower left-hand corner represents <coughs> what the property currently looks like, and so we simply came in and designed approximately a 20-foot extension to that with the same architectural features, except that it would be uh, RF permeable material so that the antennas could be inside the structure, all of our coax could be inside, and we actually would be leasing one of the storefronts inside the building for our radio equipment and running all of the coax and cabling up inside one of the uh, columns right here. Currently, you can't really see it on this photograph because of the lighting, but currently uh, an, an approval was granted for one of the other carriers to just mount antennas that are kind of side mounted on that existing rooftop and we would incorporate those antennas into the stealth feature, further cleaning up uh, the existing property. Um, we needed the additional height or it wasn't worth building the site, so uh, we, we got the RF engineer to agree to a, a minimum of 60 foot for the top of his antenna, which this is going to grant us. So uh, I appreciate staff working with me. I appreciate the landlord working with me. Uh, and I would uh, appreciate uh, you all agreeing with staff recommendation for approval. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Uh, this is a public hearing. If you wish to speak on sign, please come forward. Thank you. Todd Farlow, 240 North 19th Street. This is nice. I appreciate somebody actually hiding this stuff. But I'm curious, what is that great big empty field across the street? At the corner. I think that's a uh, junior high school. Or part of a ball field. Oh well. Didn't it? You see? Yes. Ah, okay. Well, now I got a problem with that because I mean, if that's a school, the school needs the income. So. <laughs> but I agree with you. It is a nicer approach to this. Uh, commissioners, any comments, questions? No, sir, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I'll move for approval of uh, item 15, VAR 35746. I think he's got to set a new standard here for, for these times. Because you're actually going from two that were exposed, which would have made three, but now you're going, now they're all hidden. Correct. Is that correct? Thank you. It, it kind of goes towards the theme that Commissioner Evans and I had the discussion at our Planning Commission a year or so ago about building them co-locatable and making them yep. uh, actually architecturally capable of holding it. Done a great job. Thank you. And I would like to make a comment for the record that the uh, in fact, last year, uh, Commissioner Goins, you also brought up the school district, and so that you know good faith efforts have been put forth on our part. I've been in contact constantly for uh, the year since then, and as of last week, received another email from Clark County Schools that they are not in a position yet to have an opinion or a viable lease to approach to be uh, viable candidates for telecommunications carriers. We've tried and tried. I know that they're short-staffed. I know that they There's have projects like that are taking longer, but we're, we're not able to get through the door at this point, which was the same position we were last year. So I have been trying. Thank I'm you. just not there yet. There's a motion on item 15. Um, comments? Please catch your vote. And that is approved, item 16. Item 16. Let me ask you before I make the motion. Sure. How, how much safer does this make in terms of, is there less omission of no, sir. whatever these towers throw off by enclosing it? The, the safety is regulated by the Federal Communications Commission as well as the Telecommunications Act of, I believe, 1996. Yes. Thank so, you. I always say 95, and I'm always wrong. Uh, it does not. It's simply the, the materials above and below will be standard construction materials, but Right around the antennas is going to be basically glorified fiberglass that allows the signal to pass through without degrading the signal. So, so service they, guys would be able to get up in that tower and that's work correct. on it? We've designed it to have them be able to service and come up inside the antennas so they're not exposed because we have to do that to protect our own workers as well. But it does not affect one way or the other the overall safety. That is governed by the frequencies and the, the power output and, and the safety measures we put in place. Thank you. It's a very uh, good question. Though. Thank you. I'd like to move for appro uh, approval of item 16, SUP 35744, subject to all staff recommendations and conditions. Okay. Please cast your vote. 
And that else is approved, and both these items will go on to City Council on November 4th. 4th. Thank you very much. Thank you. you bet. Have a good evening. Item 15 and 16 related items. No, I want to try 17 and 18 related items. Right. VAR 35754, applicant owner city of Las Vegas to allow 19 parking spaces where 26 parking spaces are required for a proposed government facility fire station at 4551 East Bonanza Road. Compa uh, companion item SDR 35751 for a proposed 7,600 square foot government facility fire station with a waiver to allow zero foot landscaping buffer between the sidewalk and back of curb where five feet is required along the arterial streets 100 feet and wider mr chairman these requests are for a proposed fire station staff can support the variance request as a fire station is unlike a traditional government facility in that it will provide both work and living space for a specific number of employees with minimal public access the facility is expected to house no more than 12 firefighters at any time and the parking provided is adequate. The use of the site for a fire station is appropriate and will be compatible with the surrounding uses. Staff can support the requested waiver as additional landscaping is provided in the buffer areas. Staff therefore recommends approval of both items. Uh, if the variance is denied, the associated site development plan review cannot be approved and a new site development plan review would, would, be, would be required prior to development of the site. Uh, please note that one additional protest and two additional letters of support were received for this item. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Nice cell tower. <laughs> uh, Sam Tolman, I'm architecture project manager for the City of Las Vegas and Architect of Record. Uh, we have uh, reviewed the staff's conditions. We're in favor of them, and we're here to help answer any questions. Uh, this was a public hearing. Anybody wish to speak on this item? Please come forward. Seeing no one, close public hearing. Um, I'm looking at the site plan here, and I guess I'm missing where the this big variance is because the plan I'm looking has got landscaping and squiggly lines everywhere. So, uh, staff, could you explain exactly where this um, zero this landscaping is? On the arterial, on Bonanza, the code it calls for the um, area of the street trees at back of curb uh, immediately and then the sidewalk behind that. Okay, so it requires a detached sidewalk yes. where this is a sidewalk. That's, That's why correct. it looked, but still looks good. So. Yes, it does. If there are no other comments, motions? Um, Mr. Oh, Chairman, uh, on, oh, no comments? Mr. Uh, Evans, go ahead. I'm prepared to make a motion. You got Anybody it. want to say anything? No? Uh, yes, I agree with the staff the recommendation on both the variance and the site development review um, my motion would be f to follow their recommendation on agenda item number 17 VAR 35754 for approval motion please catch your vote and that is approved and that will go into city council or that's oh I'm sorry let's try 18 now and uh, 18, the companion item on the site development review, uh, I think it looks good and uh, appreciate the additional landscaping that was provided elsewhere. Um, my motion would be to follow the recommendation of the staff for approval. Is motion for approval. Uh, please cast your vote. And that is approved, and that will go on to City Council on November 4th. Thank you. Item 22, SUP 35731, applicant La Lupita Mar Meat Market, owner V&I Lake Mead Promenade, LLC, for a proposed beer and wine cooler off-sale establishment within an existing 4,240 square foot convenience store with a waiver to allow a distance separation of 160 feet from a church where 400 feet is required at 6430 West Lake Mead Boulevard. Mr. Chairman, the applicant is proposing to add the on-premise sale of beer, wine, and coolers in a, an existing convenience store that is part of an existing uh, strip commercial development. 
Staff does not support the waiver request and therefore recommends denial. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Laura Drea, 520 South 4th Street, here on behalf of La Lupita. La Lupita is a meat market, actually. I prefer to call it a meat market rather than convenience store. It's been in operation since 2005. And when they opened, they had no interest in serving wine and beer. It was actually their customers that were coming up to them saying, I'm having a big barbecue, I'm having a big Super Bowl party, can I get wine and beer? And the answer, of course, at that time was no. So th three years into their business, they got their money together to uh, apply for their, li their liquor license. As you can see, it's more of a meat market, a grocery store. They even have a bakery. Um, the checkouts even have the little conveyor belts, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not like a 7-Eleven where people would do a beer run. I think most of the clients are going to have large grocery orders, and this is a, an addition to that. For those of you that are interested in semantics, there is a church located here. La Lupita is located here. The 160-foot separation that we're talking about is this property line to this property line. So in other words, if I were to parcel off the store itself, it would be more than 400 feet from the church's property line, not to mention the church. The front door of the two buildings can't even see each other. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. This was a public hearing. Please come forward. Thank you. Todd Farlow, 240 North 19th Street. Yesterday at the council meeting, there was a big brouhaha over one of these things. And I'm, my question to staff is this. When they get this special, is there a restriction on the square foot? Uh, is, is the beer and line, uh, wine, is it restricted to a percentage of the square footage of the store? That, that's my question. If I may, John? Director, would you? The, um, they, the applicant submits a floor plan, and therefore, if the project is approved, then it is restricted to the area shown on the floor plan. But is it that, is not automatic. But it's not automatic. That's correct. For sure. And, and then that, would be, that would, be, would be my thing. I wouldn't have any problem, but I really do believe that rather than to turn this thing, you know, because... There has to be some mechanism to say you can't turn the entire place over into a, into a, a liquor establishment. So I would have no problem, but I, if there was um, uh, a percentage of the square footage, if it was limited to a percentage of the square footage. Thank you. And I think that's the intent of the, the applicant in the event. Anybody else wish to speak on this item? Seeing no one close public hearing. Would you like to respond to that? To the square footage, we're just going to use the existing coolers, half of which will remain soft drinks as they are now, and uh, maybe take one or two of the existing coolers and use it for beer and wine. And I'll also mention that we have no problem with the condition to not have the, the single sales. Okay. Commissioner Blitz? Just real quick, I was in there today and um, at the store, and I talked with uh, Jocelyn and I believe I Ivan. Yes. The, the manager and you're absolutely right it is a small portion in the back where they're just going to um, put put beer and wine it's a pretty unique little store um, um, Hispanic store uh, I was very very impressed with the cleanliness of it and uh, it is truly a meat a market um, I actually left out of there with a spare ribs rice and beans and some some tortillas myself and uh, yes and so um, and they actually cook hot food in there, and it's it's a very unique, very unique store, and, and uh, it's a very small portion. Um, it's family. Uh, when I was in there today, a lot of families, a lot of um, um, kids with their moms in there getting groceries. So I don't think I think this will actually complement the store um, as well. So, with that being said, I just uh, I would echo that, um, Commissioner. I I think there's a, a disconnect somewhere where we have what's considered a grocery store and right. a convenience store. And if I'm not mistaken, this is just shy of the square footage that would be categorized as a grocery store. 
Yes. And I don't know, other than square footage, how that's determined, but I, I know there are a number of these smaller stores that, like this, that have a, a significant produce aspect to it, and in this case, a meat market, and I think it would be a real disadvantage to not be able to compete, in this case, just beer and wine, meeting all the standard conditions, et cetera. Um, versus a convenience store, where you talked about making a beer run. I think it's just an incidental use, and I too don't have any problem with this at all. And additionally, I know that it, uh, Title 19 allows for that separation from a major arterial or whatever, so the waiver could be granted. But I'm with uh, Commissioner Goins on this. I, I, I like the fact that you sell food and that, and that it basically is a family market. That's great. I, I even had a chance to sample some cooked cactus today, so. <laughs> Was very good. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, is there a motion? Either Mr. One? Chairman, move to approve item 22, SUP 35731. Here's a motion for approval. Uh, if no other comments, please cast your vote. I have a receipt for five ninety nine. I got. I gave her a twenty. And, and that is approved. Now we're going to City Council on November fourth. <laughs> item twenty three. SUP 35739, applicant Cherie Sandness, D.C., owner TIH Peak LLC et al., for a proposed 2,800 square foot massage establishment with waivers to allow a zero foot distance separation from a city park where 400 feet is required and a 270 foot distance separation from a, another massage establishment where 1,000 feet is required at 720, 7250 peak. Mr. Chairman, this request uh, for a special use permit for massage, a massage establishment within an existing medical office, which has a current business license for accessory massage. The applicant is proposing to utilize two massage rooms with a total area of 202 square feet, which exceeds the maximum floor area of 150 square feet that is allowed for the accessory massage use. Therefore, the special use permit is required for the massage establishment. A condition has been added to limit the massage establishment use to the rooms designated in the submitted floor plan. Staff is recommending approval of this request as the proposed use can be conducted in a manner that is compatible with the surrounding uses. Good evening. Good evening. Shui Samus, 7250 Peak Drive, Suite 106. You've, you've read all the staff's conditions and you're in agreement with them? Yes. You operate the facility currently in the, I guess, the chiropractor office? Yes. And you've been doing that for how long? It, it'll, it'll be eight years in February. Right. They just changed the licensing requirements for massage um, this year. And I have always had two or three massage therapists. And time-wise, I went after for the ancillary. My rooms were a little bit over you know, the square footage, so I've been using one room, and it's affected my business, so I did go ahead for the special use permit, and originally when I had called the city planning, I was told my, the office building wasn't zoned to give a special use, and so that's why I didn't do it initially, too. And then I met with Councilman Anthony, and he told me I was zoned, and I could go ahead and do it. All right, thank you. This was advertised public hearing, and be here, we should speak on this item. Seeing no one close public hearing. Commissioners? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Commissioner Evans? Just to comment, uh, I, I, I know that you've been doing this for a number of years, and then if I'm not mistaken, there was, I don't know whether it was a state statute or ordinance that was codified or what, but now you have to, to jump through these hoops. And so I just wanted to say that I uh, appreciate you going through the mm -hmm. effort, and uh, I know it can be burdensome. and probably have to go down and get for the all the various municipalities and I certainly am sympathetic to that but uh, this will absolutely see my support and I appreciate you going through all the effort thank you Mr. Flanders Mr. Chairman I echo uh, Mr. Commissioner Black's uh, comments or Commissioner Evans uh, comments I knew his father so excuse me <laughs> And in any event, there's one con uh, concern I have is that I would like this to remain as an accessory use uh, if approved. I'm not sure whether or not we can do it that way, but 
uh, that's how I'd like to see it go because I don't want to see her closed down and all of a sudden we have a massage parlor in the area. And so I'd like it to, you if know, I as may. a condition, to remain as an accessory use to a medical facility. The square footage, if I may, the condition number one limits it to the square footage of 202 square feet as shown on the site plan. So they cannot change that um, without going through another public hearing. Okay. Okay, then with that said, I would move to approve special use permit 35739. There's a motion for approval. Cast your vote. And that is approved, and that will go to City Council on November 4th. Thank you. Thank you. Item 24, TXT. How about 25? TXT 35898, applicant owner city of Las Vegas to amend Title 19. Point oh six point oh nine oh to add archaeologist as a qualification for Historic Preservation Commission membership. The uh, if I may, uh, Chairman, the uh, state law was recently changed in the last legislative session with regard to um, some new requirements in the area of historic preservation. In this case, our proposal is to add. Uh, specifically a member experienced in the archaeological profession as a member requirement for the HPC, whereas previously we had a provision for a historian or archaeolog archaeologist. And we're also changing some language with regard to membership. Uh, these changes are in Title 19, and therefore it is, requires a text amendment, and staff is recommending approval of these changes before you this evening. So if I understand this correctly, um, you're, we would require one of the members to be an archaeologist yes. as opposed to an at-large member? As, as opposed to previously we had historian or archaeologist. That's a hard one. And this is in conformance with the new state law. So, okay. Uh, this was advertised public hearing. We should speak on this item. And actually, we do have an archaeologist right now. Seeing no one closed public hearing. Any comments, questions? Anybody dislike archaeologists? <laughs> you say that a lot easier than I do. <laughs> yeah, I have a motion. Mr. Chairman, move to approve item 24, TXT 34878, subject to all staff's recommendation and condition. A motion, please cast your vote. And that is approved. Goes forward to council in ordinance form. Item 26, TXT 35917, applicant owner, City of Las Vegas, to amend Title II of 19.04.010, Title 19.14.090, and 19.20 to denote applicable zoning districts provided development standards and define the off-premise sign temporary use. This item comes before the commission this evening as there is currently no language in Title 19 um, that addresses a temporary off-premise sign, as is the case in many instances where a use that has not previously been considered comes forward, then a proposal is made to amend the code to address a type of, of use that has not previously been considered. Uh, that is the case here with regard to banners or wraps that are proposed that are off-premise signs. The staff has attempted to craft standards for these. Staff is not recommending approval, but rather bringing this forward for the, uh, nor denial, but bringing this forward for the commission's consideration. The standards would be that the sign would be required to be flush mounted, um, permitted in commercial and manufacturing districts, no signs in the right of way, um, no signs within the exclusionary zone, um, one per parcel, the size the same as existing off-premise signs, 
um, no distance separation, that they obtain a temporary sign certificate, duration to be 60 days, and violation and remedies pursuant to property maintenance standards. So the idea is to take the much of the language from off-premise signs um, to combine that with our existing code with regard to temporary signs and bring forward a proposal for this type of use. If there's any questions, I'll certainly attempt to address them at this time. Okay. There is a, uh, this is a public hearing. Anybody wish to speak on sign, please come forward. Seeing no one will close the public hearing. Um, Director Wheeler, this, we went through a review of building wraps in certain sign districts in the downtown specific to on-premise but gaming uses, specific uses. I think when we, when Commissioner Evans talked earlier today about, or this evening about us uh, making bad decisions because of the economy and other things, this will be an incredibly bad decision on the behalf of the city of Las Vegas. Every landlord who's got a building that's half broke, owned by the RTC, or not the RTC, owned by um, Washington in some form or fashion, will have, if this goes forward, we'll, every 60 days we'll have a moving circus of off-premise signs. We will look like a third world country. We will, we will cheapen the real estate market. We'll, we will screw up our tax base. And the only ones that will benefit is the guys printing the signs. This this is really a bad way to go because I could imagine, I mean, I can show you half a dozen buildings that the cost will make sense to take a dilapidated building that's unmaintained, um, covered with graffiti, and stick up one of these signs and say, well, we're, look what we're doing for the area. We've improved it. And all we're doing is putting, uh, you know, if, ands, or buts signs on uh, the side of every house or... Uh, uh, we got them on the side of trucks now. We got them. Actually, we got uh, lighted billboards on people walking up down the strip. You know, th this is a perfect deal. Maybe we can get some nude women and we'll just wrap the wrap on them and let them walk up down the strip. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I I would uh, concur with you. I uh, I think we have a, an incredible problem that exists today, and as I understand it. It's solely based uh, on on um, code compliance. Is is you got to make a complaint before anything happens. Um, I I am always amazed when I go to other communities, many of them less economic vibrant than we, and I don't see the clutter that I see often here in this city. Um, I too, uh, there may be some tweaking of our of our ordinances, but I don't think this is going to result in a betterment of the city as well. And I note in the staff report, it says that the approval of the temporary off-premise sign certificate we processed over the counter administratively without any real detailed staff review or public hearing, since staff will not be required to provide a detailed analysis of the application, this potentially may lead to a saturation of temporary signs in the zones permitted. I, I, I think that's a little alarming to me. I, I'm not comfortable with this in the way it's written thus far. I don't object to perhaps uh, some modifications and reasonable changes to the, to the code, but I don't think this is a solution. Thank you. Any other comments? Thoughts? If none, uh, motion. Sign, signs, everywhere is a sign, huh? How's that Mr. rest Chair. of that song go, Mr. Farlow? Uh, I'll move for denial of the text amendment TXT 35917. There's a motion. Uh, ignore the comments. Please cast your vote. And that will go on to City Council with a recommendation of denial, I believe, right? 
And now we get to that wonderful time of the evening called citizens' participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. No subject may be acted upon by the Planning Commission unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium and give your name for the record. The amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of any time any single speaker is allowed, may be limited. So, Ms. Farrell, do you have anything to say? Um, you want to hold up a sign? Um, <laughs> then we're done. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Dude.